If you stay on Walt Disney World property and visit by flying into Orlando International Airport, there's a good chance you've heard of, and maybe even used, Disney's Magical Express. It's the free bus transportation offered to guests traveling to and from MCO on their Disney vacation. It makes a lot of people's lives easier. However, for what seemed like a great idea, Disney's Magical Express actually had a pretty rocky start. Disney was always looking for ways to get guests to stay on Walt Disney World property. MGM Studios, Pleasure Island, Downtown Disney, Typhoon Lagoon, these were all essentially attempts at offering experiences that guests might have otherwise looked for elsewhere in Central Florida. The more total of a package they'd offer, the longer people would stay on property, and the more money they'd spend there as a result. So in 2005, Disney took yet another step in that direction by introducing Disney's Magical Express. The idea was pretty simple and clever. Offer free bus transportation between Disney World and the airport to guests staying on property, and you reduce the odds that those guests will rent cars for their trip. Less rental cars means less of a chance that they'll drive off property for the other theme parks or the other Florida offerings. It offers the temptation of a more simplified and all-encompassing Disney vacation. Disney kicked off the program by partnering with the Mears Transportation Group for what would be a year-long testing period. Their initial deal with Orlando International Airport had them paying the airport 50 cents for every passenger they picked up. Disney was getting what they wanted, Mears was getting a contract, the airport was getting revenue, and guests were getting a totally optional and free perk that made their trip easier. It was a win-win-win-win scenario. Except it wasn't. Naturally, there was one group who didn't like the program at all. Orlando's local cab, limo, and livery drivers. Disney World was a major draw for Orlando travelers, and they feared that Disney's program was going to eat into that business. They'd ultimately be right, but there wasn't really anything they could do about it. It's not like Disney was breaking any rules. Well, actually, that's exactly what the drivers accused Disney of doing. You see, one of the aspects of the Magical Express program when it launched was that Disney had cast members standing outside of the main terminal on the third level to greet guests, answer questions, and direct them towards the buses. The Greater Orlando Livery Association argued that this was in violation of MCO's policy against soliciting on the third level and created an unfair playing field. Disney countered that because the guests using Magical Express had to sign up for their rides before the trip, they weren't actually doing any soliciting. However, some cab drivers claimed that Disney was guilty of taking on passengers who hadn't actually signed up for the service. So in September of 2005, the Greater Orlando Livery Association reached out to the Greater Orlando Aviation Authority, who ran MCO, and formally asked them to end their partnership with Disney. Over the following months, there was a lot of back and forth, not just between officials of all these organizations, but also through the media. Hearings were held that fall by the GOAA to try and find a solution. In an effort to placate the cab drivers, MCO forced Disney to relocate their greeters to the second level. They also made Disney replace their own cast members at the airport with Mears employees, since Mears was technically running the service on behalf of Disney. The Livery Association continued to argue that the deal was harming many small businesses, some to the point of bankruptcy. Meanwhile, the Magical Express service itself was booming. Guests were overwhelmingly in favor of the perk, and by that point it was shuttling up to 10,000 guests a day to and from Walt Disney World. As the end of the test period approached, it became clear to everyone involved that the Magical Express buses weren't going anywhere. That said, the Aviation Association wasn't about to let the program continue as is either. GOAA Chairman Jeffrey Fuqua admitted that they made mistakes in how the test was structured, and now that they had almost a year's worth of data, they'd be able to renegotiate the deal. After an outside consultant looked at the program, it was discovered that the airport was actually losing money on Disney's Magical Express. It was bringing in revenue due to that 50 cent per person fee, but that revenue was being offset by the lost business of smaller livery companies who were usually paying a higher fee. So the new deal involved bumping up the 50 cent fee to 75 cents with the ability to later bump it up again to $1.50 in 2010. Additionally, Magical Express would have to move their operation from the A side of the terminal to the B side, which was more commonly used for buses. Disney would once again be allowed to station their own cast members by the buses, 
but in turn, they weren't allowed to set up similar operations at any other airport within 100 miles of MCO. With the new deal in place, Disney announced that Disney's Magical Express would be sticking around till at least 2011 and would remain free to guests. While the Livery Association continued to argue that its existence was hurting independent livery businesses by an overall of 30 to 40 percent, Disney countered that the program created over 600 jobs in the Orlando area, both through Disney and through Mears. Today, Disney's Magical Express is still around and still free to guests staying on property. Its inception, as is often the case when an established business model is shaken up, was met with resistance. However, it not only survived the gauntlet as a business venture, but more importantly, it won the approval of the people using it. And so it has since become just one more element in what makes a Disney vacation so unique.